Oh, black hole sun, won't you come and wash away the rain? Black hole baby! Oh. Hello. I forgot I was recording this. Uh oh. Oh, welcome again. Brian, the one, the only hobo, Tom. And again, my countdown continues. I have 24 more days. So I think my first live stream is going to be AAA again. I think they're having some show December 3rd. No, that can't be right. I don't know. Well, I'll see what happens. Maybe it's December 1st. Oh, that would be so cool. It might actually be December. Why do I have the December first circled? There's a reason why I have that circled. I'll figure out why. I'm not here to talk about Triple H tonight. I'm here to talk about some raw. This is gonna be a double show. Um, it's good that I'm working. It's always good to have money. Thumbs up. Unfortunately, it has to go with the sacrifice of YouTube time because, well, YouTube doesn't pay me. Not monetized yet, so I'm not worried about that. Here. Oh, there we go. Now it's centered. It's centered better than it normally is. I know he knocked into it, so. Yes, technical issues. But I'm here to talk about some Monday Night Raw and. Ooh, Survivor Series is going to be fun. Uh, let's start off the show, Monday Night Raw. Uh, no one actually talked. Well, no, no, no one could talk to me. I had to kind of watch and shame by myself. But so Triple H shows up and the black es the caravan of black escalates. Oh yeah. Triple H is the man. Baby! Baby. Uh, then Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman come out. Uh, he starts <laughs> he cuts the promo. He's upset because he wants Rey Mysterio. He looks for him Rey Mysterio, he just beats up someone at cater at a catering table. Uh, pulls some guy out of a limo. Starts yelling. Brock is so good when he's motivated. Uh, then the first match of the night, we have the Kabuki Warriors. Oh, evil Kyrie and evil Asuka. Oh, evil Asuka. I can call myself, though, because I don't have a girlfriend anymore. I, I still have to work on that again. It's such a good idea to call it Hobo and Girlfriend. Should I call it Hobo and his cat? I <laughs> just featured. Well, she's was somewhere. I don't know where she is. But it was the Kabuki Warriors. Again, evil Kabuki Warriors. And uh, taking on Charlotte Flair and Natalia. And I guess they figured they're going to be a tag team now. I, I don't know. They, they could be like the Women's Legacy, though. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, Natalia and Flair working together. Again, eh. We'll see what happens. I'll tell you what. I like the Kabuki Warriors evil outfits. That black oh, looks so good on both Kairi Sane and Asuka wearing black with a golden thong on the outside. <laughs> I'll get to that in a moment. Um, it was a pretty good uh, Santa wrestling match. I'll tell you what. Charlotte picked up Asuka into, and into a uh, body slam position. And I'll tell you what, he dug those two fingers into Asuka's cooch. Whoa. Yeah, she picked her up. Yeah, she picked her up. Checking her oil, though. That was pretty funky, though. Uh, again, Flair, she hit the double moonsault onto both Kairi Sane and Asuka at one time. Eventually, Maddie started to get beat up a lot. Um, then there was a weird tag moment where, like, Charlotte Flair was like centimeters away, and it was kind. Of, someone missed their spot, or something weird happened. It was like they were like this close to like tagging, and they didn't like really. Like you see her like jump halfway across the ring to make the tag. And she wasn't being, and Charlotte wasn't being held back or anything. Again, overall, it was pretty good though. Um, Kyrie Sane, she she has she's has that 
funk where she's in the same move set because now people know what move she's going to do. Oh, and uh, the first time that Asuka got caught in a sharpshooter by Natalia because eventually Natalia tags in the side direction leg sweep. Such a good wrestling move for some reason. I don't know. It's one of my favorite wrestling moves. I think I it was the third wrestling move I think I ever tried out. First was the pile driver. Second was the sleeper. Third was a side rush and leg sweep. It just looks cool. Um, but then Natalia got Asuka for the first time into the sharpshooter. And Carrie saying hit like a code breaker onto Natalia. So that broke that up. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, Charlotte gets in, beats him up a little bit. Natalia gets back in. And Asuka gets caught in the sharpshooter a second time. Asuka taps? Asuka should not be tapping. Kind of disappointing that she tapped. Overall, I mean, minus the, the one pack spot, it was a good match. This was a cheeseburger match. Um, eventually, oh, Brock yeah, goes outside, see some guy in a car, rips like the car door the wrong way. Car doors weren't meant to go like that, unless you have a side car door from like the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, I guess. Uh, um, uh, he comes back to the announce table, threatens Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, Dio gets, Dio steps up, eats an F5 for his troubles. Don't step up to an angry Brock Lesnar. That's the lesson there. And eventually, Ray comes out with a pipe and just swings away at Brock's legs. And a really good Ray promo follows. Then we have Buddy Murphy versus Cedric Alexander. Again, another good quality match. I mean, uh, Buddy Murphy used the ring apron as a distraction. I don't know if he, I don't know if he's ever done that before. Um, Cedric Alexander, he has the elbows and kicks. So good. That springboard flatliner looked amazing. Murphy's Law looks really good when these two guys have a match. 205, 205, 205. I'll tell you what, it was fun. It was fast paced. Again, you start doing wrestles with purpose. Again, you have a de definitely different style. Buddy Murphy's more of the brawling 205 or Cedric Alexander's a little more flippy. This was a, another good match. This was a surf and turf match. Then there's a Seth Rollins promo. Um, Triple H comes out and says, remember who built you up? Who's, who's the master architect? Um, and then, of course, the Undisputed Era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For life. Undisputed Air show up. They did that, right? <laughs> Undisputed Era. Um, and they beat up the club. Which kind of makes sense. Because the club and AJ Styles did skip over NXT. So it makes sense that they don't want anything to do with NXT. Because, well, they were good enough to skip NXT. And when I mean, you come from New Japan, one time you went straight to the main roster. Not anymore. Then we have Andrade, Sin Almas, and Zelina Vega taking on Sin Cara. And Carolina or Katrina or Carolina, they have to figure out what her name is. And this was a good mixed tag match. I wonder if they're going to have the Mixed Match, ch miss, uh, mixed match Challenge like they did last year. That would be good to see. And as far as Mixed max, mixed Tag Team Matches go, WWE has to at some time allow the women to take bumps from the men. I'm not saying pile drive them from the second rope. A body slam here and there. A solid wrestling move, like a forearm, or a clothesline, or a drop kick. I'd be fine with um, as long as it, it's, just, it's not overly abusive, like Suzuki v. Asuka. That after like a good minute of it, you're like, ooh, 
Ooh. Ooh. That just looks bad. And... <laughs> it would be neat to see Selena Vena's undies, though. And just like Mad Men Fallen showed the whole world that Tessa Blanchard wears brown panties. Brown lace panties, too, by the way. When they look brown. And it was like all, all like lace brown, though. That was pretty cool. Yes, we saw Tessa. I felt special. Uh, Sinkara, yeah, he was pretty good. I mean, he takes most of the beating, which is good. It makes sense. Um, he does get his, he, he does get some on over Andrade Almas. I mean, Andrade tends to toy with him a little bit more than he should. Again, but Andrade's. The arrogant heel, so it should be. Catalina can wrestle though. She's good. Uh, she was good. I think she was in the Mayan Classic one year. She lost, I think, in the first round sometime. She's good though. Zlino Vega wins with a basement Rana. I'm happy with that. Zlino Vega comes back a little bit from her loss. This is a cheeseburger of a match. Then we have Lana and Lashley because Rusev's in the ring. Um, Lashley comes on and crushes because he he tore his groin, making sweet snoo snoo with Lana. I could see that happening. I wonder how creative Lana would be in the bed. And did, but my mind wanders to things that probably shouldn't. She is a married woman. And probably happily married to someone from Bulgaria who probably knows people that could erase me. So instead of Bobby Lashley wrestling Rusev, through McIntyre. This is good because normally what the WWE's done, they've done a, a, a clash of styles where you'll have you know, the high flyer versus the brawler. Here you have brawler versus brawler. So again, big guy versus big guy. This is good. It's a little bit different. Um, they don't do it. They don't do big on big that often, which is pretty, which is good. Uh, hey, I'll give WWE credit when it's due. The fact that they change up their regimen, they change up their program. That's definitely a thumbs up. Again, the similar styles is a good change of pace. Um, they did do the, the the double splash onto each other, kind of followed it up. Rusev goes around trying to using double axe handle blows. Whenever I see the double X handle blow, again, probably the fourth move I learned in the days of my misspent youth watching pro wrestling. The pile driver, the sleeper, the side Russian leg sweep, the double X handle, the fifth was the claw, and the sixth was actually the drop toe hold. I learned wrestling by watching pro wrestling. Pretty cool. Uh, it was pretty good until Ashley eventually gets enough of it because Rusev does get the upper hand on Drew McIntyre. Again, if you're going to have Drew McIntyre job out to someone, it makes sense to job out to a big guy like Rusev. Rusev's pretty thick. And when I say thick, I mean he's, he's strong and hefty. Drew's, Drew's, not a, Drew's no pencil neck geek, but Drew's not used to wrestling people like Rusev. So that makes sense. Uh, Lashley comes out, eventually hits Rusev with, with, a, with a crush. Uh, then Randy Orton comes out of nowhere. I don't even know where he came from. Okay, it was Rusev. Ricochet tries to make the save. This was fun. It's a little bit different. Oh, wow. That's another cheeseburger match. Uh, then Becky Lynch has an interview, and she gets interrupted by Shayna Baszler. So that should be pretty interesting for Survivor Series. I th want to say Survivor Series is the 24th. So again, I'll do a review of it. I'll get the December pay-per-view on my live stream where you can hear some of the audio. In WWE, I have to be careful of them. I just have to be careful, period. Although I'm going to see what I'm going to do December 1st with AAA. So that'd be kind of fun to do another live stream. I think it's December 1st. I know sometime in December. And then hopefully next Saturday, all of off during the day. Well, wait a second. When do I? 
Oh, that's the day I have to go to work early. That's like the mandatory meeting. Day. I got to write that down. But hopefully I get to the NXT show. As I come back to Daytona Beach, it would be nice to see Jennifer. Yes. Hi, Jennifer. Sorry I couldn't make it to the last NXT show. I had to work that night. It sucked. But then we have the club coming out to take on the Street Profits and Umberto Carrero. I'll tell you what, Umberto is a star in the making. In 10 years, Umberto's he's going to have the, the uh, amazing Spanish soccer player, muy super guapo look. I think that's the right word in Spanish. I forget. Whatever the super handsome word is in Spanish. And he's going to have the voice of Dr. Wagner Jr. Perfect combination. Whoa. Yeah, this was fun. It was a clash of styles again. The club, very New Japan-ish. Uh, they wanted to beat up strong style-wise the Street Profits. Street Profits want, wanted to fly. Oh, boy. Can Umberto Carrero fly? I'll tell you what, the Street Profits, they, they're pretty close to flying, too. Uh, Carl Anderson, again, he takes the Carl Anderson role and gets beat up a lot. He does get in some offense, though. I mean, he grounds one of the Street Profits, kind of grinds him a little bit, which is good to see. Uh, the club, again, they do the dirty heel tag team tactics. Again, the distraction, beat the guy up. I like that. Uh, again, the tag team isolation by the club. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And then, um, then became, of course, in any six man tag, you're always going to have your spot fest. Again, the tag team work by, by everyone involved is amazing. And then heel AJ Styles. He beats Umberto Carrero by getting his foot on the, on the ropes. Oh, AJ has to realize where those ropes are because he, he could barely get his feet up on them, like literally by the tippy toes. And the club pick up a win. They're still the best tag team in the world. And again, this was another fun match. This was a surf and turf match. And then it goes, takes a step down as the way Ross always should. War Machine squashed the East Hampton Polo boys. And another squash match. So the, the only good part of this is they, is they got on the mic. Talked a little bit how they want to fight the OC. So I'll upgrade a little bit. This match was a can of soup. And then we have Seth Rollins versus Adam Cole, baby! Boom! Or he does it. Boom! Or does he go, I forget, boom, I forget which way, I, I forget which direction he actually points the finger gun. Or does he just go, boom! Well, that's Kenny Omega. And he goes, boom! I don't know. Maybe, maybe he does point it out. Boom! I don't know. Baby! That's the best. Crowds just want to say, Adam Cole, baby! Say that all day long. Baby! Um, again, it starts off really as a classic wrestling match. Um, the nice thing about this match is that Seth doesn't do all the dives. So it makes it a little bit different. It says, like, okay, Seth, we want you to change stuff up, which is good. Uh, Adam Cole... He figures out how to get out of the buckle bomb, which is smart. Again, probably the only person to do that. And no one wins by the Falcons' arrow. Uh, they trade forearms and chops, which is pretty good. They do. They go outside for a while. Uh, Seth Rollins gets tossed into the barricade. Then you have uh, reverse the reversal of the Panama Sunset. That looks really complex to do. Then they again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they have a, 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 a they have a two x they they clothesline each other the double clothesline the rolling suplex into the Falcons arrow which never pins anyone and then 
Couple people show up from the un undisputed era. Because they're for life. Baby! Boom. <laughs> Hit all my sun bites. Uh, they show up. They just beat up Seth Rollins. Then the Raw locker room shows up. NXT locker room shows up. Veggie shows up. Donovan Dijak. Or whatever Dijakovic shows up. <laughs> I want to know where is Dan Matha? I'm the hammer and they're the nail. Best line ever. Thump. Um, so again, uh, Ricochet comes out. Ricochet dives on everyone. And then Keith Lee dives on everyone. Whoa. They got to catch Keith Lee better. And I'll tell you what, just because of everything that happened, and because of Adam Cole, baby! This was a surf and turf match. And again, even though it was a dusty finish, it was probably a crab cake and petite sirloin. It wasn't no lobster tail and filet mignon. You always have dusty, dusty with, dusty with for nobody. And Dusty wants his lobster, and he just likes his crab cakes and petite sirloin, baby, baby. So I'll tell you what. Overall, this was actually a pretty entertaining RAW. Again, the good parts are really good, and for a change, the good parts really outnumbered the bad parts. Bad parts are just bad, but I guess that's what happens for RAW. So overall, this was a good cheeseburger of a RAW. Which is different a little bit from its counterpart, SmackDown, because SmackDown was amazing. SmackDown was going to be very hard to go and get. It was just so uh, much fun. It was, I'll tell you what, I've heard it several times, and, and people are right, when WWE really has their backs, backs to the raw wall, they're really good at coming up with stuff. When they're on cruise, cruise control, meh to eh. When they have to think of something on the fly, thumbs up. But when they have to go on, when they're on cruise control, thumbs down. And that's going to lead us after this little break. So also, I'd like to give some shout-outs. Um, Conjure Man 2. You, sir. Here, let me figure out what I want to use for you. I might go. I might do. Oh, there's the, there's the, there's the hobo cat. There she is. She was taking a nap somewhere. Seriously. So Conjure Man 2. Let's see. I almost forgot about this. I have to remember. I have to reorder this. So this is... Oh. Sometime. You, sir, got tossed. And Alberto Al Obrero walk. No, run out of here. So those are the sh little shout-outs. Again, you can always do that if you interact with me on Discord. I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. 
to talk about some Impact Wrestling. Because, yep, this is a duo show because it's Tuesday, and I'll, I'll probably put this up Wednesday. So we talk about Impact next. And I'll tell you what, Impact's pretty still darn enjoyable. I think I used to, I like it on Fridays better because I got into a nice rhythm. I could drink red wine. And honestly, red wine makes everything better. So it's just hard to say it's, it's an Impact Soup Day. But we start off with Moose taking out Willie Mac. And this was an amazing first match. This could have headlines like some like if they did house shows. I want Impact to come back to Florida one day. Even though now they're based in, in that in America's hat known as Canada. Uh, so it was Moose versus Willie Mac. Willie Mac can fly. I don't know how a man of his stature, although he's pretty compact, but he's a big guy to be flying doing all the stuff he does. Moose is just... He did that great corner basement dropkick and the heel rake of the face. Moose is, has, has learned what it takes to be a true heel. Uh, and how strong is Moose just to toss Willie Mac around? I know Willie Mac's helping him out. I know it's choreographed. But still, though, Willie Mac's no small guy. Uh, Willie Mac, again, he did the stunner and the clothesline from Sahel. Didn't finish it somehow. Uh, Moose had that superplex. I thought Moose got the end of it. Uh, both of them do the double kip up at the eight. Or Moose kips up at seven. Willie Mac kips up at eight. Eventually, Moose hits that amazing spear of his. Good stuff. And I'll tell you what, Moose wins. Moose. 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 Again, in a fun cheeseburger of a match. Then we see Alicia Edwards and some woman backstage. We'll get to more of the women later. I'll tell you what, Impact has an amazing women's division. They know what they do. And she catches Ace Austin talking too much about what Ace Austin is going to do to her. Hubris, Ace Austin. Hubris. That's all I'll say. And then Madison Rain and Taya Talk. Kira Hogan's there. She obviously dislocated her shoulder. You saw that. And she's out probably for two to th well, I didn't mind. It was about two weeks. So yeah, that makes sense. So she did it. Uh, it's a taping. So she'll be out probably a month before we see her wrestle. Again, or whenever they leave Canada, Canadian doctors. Almost as bad as Mexican doctors. But at least they don't let you die on the table. Uh, then we had uh, Big Mike Elgin take on Palapa. Whoa. This was a really good match. Starts off just as a brawl. Um, <laughs> Palapa hit, hit a corkscrew back headbutt. This begs to differ. What is the best headbutt? Is it the Filipino headbutt? Samoan headbutt or Scottish headbutt. Wow, I never have to figure I'd ever have to choose between those three. Um, then there was a slingshot. Oh, I'll, I'll get a slingshot stomp. And the reference. <laughs> Impact likes to reference things, especially when it's little digs. Um, they mentioned how Mike Elgin was definitely strong style. In New Japan, and how you could see New Japan Pro Wrestling on Access TV. Or one time they were on Access TV. Again, it's just funny the little dig. Don Callis, Don Callis, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. I hate it when I do that. that too quick. And camera goes bonkers. But again, he did that. He hit that slingshot stomp. That was awesome. Uh, again, Elegant hit that uh, a suplex on Fall of Bar. I thought they were. I thought they were just going to hurt each other for some reason. <laughs> and then Mike Elegant tr tried to do a power bomb. So 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 Fall of Bar flipped him. Mike tried to roll him up. 
Ball of ba. Just ba. Ball on Mike Elgin. And then there was that amazing German suplex. And that top rope belly to belly suplex that's followed by no sold. Wow. Uh, eventually, Elgin did go over. He just, super, he actually got him up in, in a suplex. And I think it was a suplex or a power bomb, but he eventually did get followed by in a finisher. That was amazing. Mike Elgin wins, deservedly so. Great match. Only thing this match was missing maybe was if TJP came out to help him or hinder him. Whatever TJP does nowadays. This is a surf and turf quality match. Then... Oh, shoot, I forgot to say these. That's okay. Let's see here. I have to make a little note here. Uh, then we had Alicia. Found that Ace Austin and Alicia hatches a plan. She doesn't want to go to get something to eat. She just gives him his room key. You know what that means? Sucker! Uh, then the North Shop cut a promo. <laughs> Then we get Joey Ryan versus Ken Shamrock. Wow. I don't think I'd ever see this match. Ever. Ken Shamrock, he was so cool doing it. Uh, Joey Ryan comes up. Ken Shamrock comes out. He has like a nine-pack of abs going. I don't know how he got so ripped. I don't know what he did. Especially the fact that he's 53-ish. I think he's not 60 yet. I don't say he's. I know he's older than me. I want to say he's like fifty-three. I might be wrong. Again, you can always leave a comment and say, "No, you moron." Ken Shamrock's older than that. I don't know. He might be. I, I, when I was fifty, if I'm ever when I'm fifty-three, I wish I could look like him. That'd be pretty cool. Tell you what, being forty-three, I wish I looked like Joey Ryan. Actually, Joey Ryan comes out. I do miss the Pina Colada song because he has a new song. So again, copyright violation. And he comes out, baby oils himself all up, takes that lollipop, puts it back in his trunks for later. Um, they don't shake. Instead, Shemrock knows better. He just high fives him, and that's pretty cool. Uh, Kenny hits a whole bunch of arm drags. And whoa, this becomes a classic wrestling match. It's pretty cool. And again, this time Ken Shamrock puts out his hand and they actually shake. So, so again, it's pretty cool. Uh, Joey Ryan has that amazing drop kick. And then they, they try to shake hands for the third time. Shamrock let his guard down. He, he shook Joey Ryan's hands. Joey Ryan put his hands on his, his crotch. And Ken Shamrock, for his credit, did the dick flip. He then snapped. Again, the crowd was chanting, you still got it. Um, after he, uh, how the, after Ken, Ken Shamrock got dick flip, he snapped. Just put the ankle lock in. Match over, Joy Ryan taps. The way it kind of should have gone. This was fun, though. It was entertaining. Made me feel good. This is a cheeseburger match. Then you have Madison Rain versus Ty Valkyrie. Yeah. Again, they mentioned Ty Valkyrie's pink outfit. Who else in Canada wore pink or fuchsia? Hmm, I wonder who. Oh, that's right, Bret Hart did. Whoa, they're just name dropping everyone here. Don Callis. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. There we go. Not too bad of a delay, at least. Uh, so, so again, they mentioned Bret Hart. Oh, Ty Valkyrie's great. She, she's actually... I didn't realize her, how thick her forearms are. If you see her, the size of her forearms versus the size of Madison Rain forearms, there's a huge difference there. And and by the way, Madison Rain is, 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 is banging Josh. 
So I just wanted to mention that because it's not the other way around. And Bon Cal's mentioned that I think once or twice, and so did the Discord, which I always have to give props to. Uh, again, High Valkyrie is just so much stronger. She does the backbreaker and the slam, and then just 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 the face to the to her butt in the corner. Uh, eventually, Madison Rain does get the upper hand. It's the kind of the same insulting moves. Sticks her butt in, in Ty Valkyrie's face. Wait. I want Madison Rain to stick her, stick her crotch in her face. That would be good. Huh, I, I, I digress there. And Ty, Val, Ty Valkyrie's a married woman. Yeah. Um, eventually, Johnny Bravo grabs the legs of Madison Rain as she comes off the ropes. And you see, you see Ty Valkyrie's side boob. Yep, Ty Valkyrie just comes spilling out of her outfit. One day, one day, folks, there will be that wardrobe malfunction on Ty Valkyrie's part. Um, Bravo again distracts Madison Rain. Madison Rain goes, grabs the stuffed toy dog and like throws it into the crowd. Someone walked away with a souvenir. I like that. However, that was enough of a distraction for Ty Valkyrie to hit. Um, Road to Valhalla. Taya Valkyrie wins. Jordan Grace comes out to confront her, saying, Wait, where's my title shot? I pinned you. Bravo gets in the way, and Bravo gets killed by a forearm from Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace looked like, like she knocked him out. I don't know. Jordan Grace could knock me out, too. Wait. I digress. I'll tell you what. Jordan Grace, I noticed it. I don't know if it was her right hand or left hand. I think she's engaged to someone. Yeah, that or she's wearing a really big rock on one of her fingers, though. Because I saw that in the promo, I'm like, oh, wow. That's a huge rock. Oh, darn it. One less fish in the sea. I, I can always dream, right, folks? That'd be cool if she was, like, right here. She'd probably say, get out of the way, hobo Tom. And, and I'd be, like, over here. I'm like, I'm like hi, hi, folks. Hi. He'd be like, why, why are you showing your face? Like, yeah, yeah, yes, sweetie. But again, I can always dream and hope. Uh, this was a fun match, though. It was a cheeseburger of a match. Then we had a Rosemary and Susie promo. Susie's the best. Rosemary saying, you put me in a coffin. You killed my best friend. I was supposed to like you. She's like, Susie's like, would you be my friend? Oh, she's Susie's so cute. Rosemary and Susie. Oh, more dirty thoughts. And and then she sees Jessica Havoc. Do I remember you? Jessica Havoc just stares at her. She's like, no, I guess I don't. And you can see Jessica Havoc's kind of falling out of her outfit, too. He doesn't have a ring on, either. There's always hope, folks. Always give yourself a 2% botched chance, no matter what. In fact, I might look that up. Ooh. Do some research. Uh, then we get... I'm going to try this. Mop Nader Singh versus a Canadian destroyer himself, Petey Williams. And that was some like ref in the ring. Um he had like no legs. I'm like because I first saw that, I'm like, oh, it was a ref tying his shoe. And, and then the, there was a shot of him again. I'm like, he's taking a long time to tie his shoe. Wait a second. Oh, he he, he has like no legs. He's an amputee. I'm like, what, what's he doing in a pro wrestling ring? Hey, listen, they've done weirder things in the past, so I won't question it. For the most part, it was a sound wrestling match. Um, Singh would not let Petey Williams do any of his big moves. In fact, Petey Williams won by a sharpshooter. Whoa. And then uh, Singh, came, Singh was arguing with the referee about, about how he's saying he tapped. He's like, listen, I didn't count to three. You tapped. Which kind of makes sense. So he started to bully the ref. Petey Williams beat up Singh a little bit more. Set 
sing up for some referee and do spot. Ref hit a Canadian 09, and the ref then hit a splash from the top, and it was pretty cool. Everyone cheered for the ref. It was a feel good moment. Another cheeseburger match. And then we get to the hotel room sequence. And this is how WWE should do every hotel room sequence. Oh, and by the way, OVU was kind of walking through the area, like partying, drinking beer, man, man, full and open a, a beer bottle with his teeth. I hope that was gimmicked. That could go very wrong very quickly. Um, one of the Jake's, one, one, one of the Chris's was like eating like Oreo cake, which sounds really good. And they were drinking beer. Although you could tell they weren't drinking beer because he like put it upside down and just bubble up. He might take a sip of it. He spat in a beer, tried to give it to a Daga. That was funny. But the hotel scene, this was the best hotel scene angle ever. Um, again, it, the, the fool Ace Austin realize, has, does not realize he should not go to a married woman's hotel room. That is very bad. So he's there. Alicia Edwards like, Get naked, wear the belt, and put this over your eyes, and I'll be, and I'm gonna go get naked in the bathroom. She's like, yeah, yeah, sex. Um, so he puts the blindfold on, puts the belt over his crotch. At some point, he she should have taken off his, his underwear. That that would have like mind blown if that happened. Uh, <laughs> so so there's some guy's arm comes into the shot, starts stroking Ace Austin's cheek. And Ace Austin's like, oh, your, your skin's so smooth. And it turns out to be Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards just starts beating him, finds a kendo stick under the bed. What, what were they going to do in that bed if there's a kendo stick in the bed? But, um... Uh, not to go too far into that. Uh, Alicia says, stop, give me the kendo stick. <laughs> he starts to beat Ace Austin with the kendo stick. So I guess that feeds over. We'll see We'll see what Eddie Edwards does next. I think the next match he's in next week, he's teaming up with the Mara Fuji for a tag team title shot. We'll see. I, I forget if Eddie Edwards ever won the tag team belts. I forget. He might have. I'm just not too sure. Um, but and, and then, uh, as Ace Austin is running down the hallway in his underwear, and the pizza guy is like, huh? Uh, Eddie Edwards and Alicia just start, just start to have a live sex show. And for some reason, Eddie Edwards grabs a kendo stick. Yeah. Um, overall, that was probably one of the best hotel angle segments ever seen. Impact knows what they're doing. That's the OVE party. Uh, again, OVE comes onto the ring. Time Dreamer shows up. He calls Time Dreamer calls Sammy Edwards a troll. It's like, ah, well, there's one of you, four of us. Guess what? It's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Sammy Callum, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. <laughs> what are we in, like, grades, like, kindergarten again? That was funny, though. When grown men say lines like that with such volition. Oh, God. It just makes me laugh. Um, again, it's a cheap... Again, Time Green was a cheap pop. Well, we're not in Ohio. We're in Windsor, Canada. I guess it's a cheap pop. So, it's a 4-on-4 four four street fight. Um, it turns out to be OVE, Sammy Callahan, Jake Chris, Dave Chris, Man Man Fun, taking on Tommy Dreamer, Tess Blanchard, Daga, and Rich Swan. And this is kind of a brawl. Not much wrestling goes around. Uh, uh, Tessa gets, gets her licks in all, all the time. Um, hits the Tower of Doom spot. Tommy Dreamer tosses a chair. He gets body slammed on the chair by Man Man Fulton. Just kind of like nonsense. Daga dives, kills everyone. Um, it, was a it was a suplex. It was a suplex to someone. I forget who. But then eventually, I think Rich Swan pins 
Or which or just which which spongo flying? Tesla Blanchard didn't pick the roll up. I think Rich Swan was gonna get pile drive, but he got like some weird roll up win. It was okay. The heels had their come up in the pace team that you get the pops in. It was this was this match was probably the low point of the match. Eh. Tommy Dreamer, Tessa Blanchard, Daga, and Rich Swan win. It's a ham sandwich. They probably told Tommy Dreamer, it's like, hey, we actually have 10 minutes to burn. Go just fly, spot fest, whatever. So again, that was Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Impact. And eventually, I think Thursday, I might be able to make a Red Wine and Pizza Smackdown logo. Because I'll be, actually, my next show will be probably Wednesday when I review AEW. And then Friday Night Smackdown. Yeah, because then I get Thursday off. I get Thursday off. Yeah, and everyone have a good night.